hopefully you can hear me because I'm muted. Hello, Internet, and welcome to Neon Souls. God damn it, if I could have one tech issue that wasn't my fault, uh, I would just love that for a stream. Hi, everyone. It wouldn't be a game that I was running tech for if I wasn't muted accidentally at some part of it. Thank you for joining us for Neon Souls tonight. Uh, we had some technical complications, computers exploding, uh, which is why we have uh, uh, Sam and Morgan sharing a screen and Savannah's not here, but that's unrelated to the tech issues. She's still recovering from tooth hurts. Uh, Hi, we are here to play some Fate in our long-running uh, Neon Souls game. Uh, before we get started, I'm just going to quickly breeze through our announcements and tell everybody what we're doing right now. If you like what you see here tonight and you want to watch more poorly produced stream, no, they're all great production quality. Savannah puts a lot of work in on these, but I just fuck it up on my end. Uh, you can join us tomorrow for uh, Saturday Night Star Power. It's another game I run using the same system, Fate. Uh, however, it's anime as hell. We're in sort of a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure slash Jujutsu Kaisen uh, universe, and it's it's a lot of fun. We got a lot of drama going on right now, so come join us tomorrow at 5 for that. Uh, the rest of our schedule for this week should be the same. Uh, our Slang 101 stream is kind of up in the air for sorry 201 thank you said uh our stream for sunday is still kind of up in the air right now we'll see how savannah's doing we'll probably do something to fill the time slot if if she's not feeling well but uh we will see and we'll keep everybody updated uh if you want to stay up to date on tech issues that we've got going on on our channel uh head over to our discord or our twitter links to both are below our faces live on twitch um and if you're watching us on youtube at some point in the future head over to twitch page follow us while you're there and see whatever we're doing right now uh that's about it i'm gonna go and let my players here introduce themselves talk about who they are uh and what they're doing on and off the channel and who they're playing here tonight tonight because i had to move around the overlay stuff starting with sid hey i'm christina sid you can find me on the twitters at greek sid generally just talking about stuff I do here because there's a lot of it. Uh, I'm here on Fridays, yay. I'm here every other Saturday, on Sundays, and on Mondays, and then I'm usually running some sort of shindig on Thursdays, but Val has been nice enough during the hell weeks of musical season to run something uh, for me for a while, so thank you. But we have a season three of something on Thursdays in the works, promise. So more updates to come uh, tonight. I am playing Impulse. Uh, Impulse is the cunning fashionista negotiator. Uh, next up is Morgan. Hello, I'm Morgan, also known as Imaginatrix on the internet. I'm on Instagram and Twitter under Imaginatrix. So if you're interested in cosplay, which is what I mainly do, you can check that out. Um, I'm here on Fridays, Sundays, and Mondays, uh, but tonight on Fridays, I'm playing Clarity, who is the eccentric hacker. And last up is Sam. Hi, everybody. My name is Sam. You can find me everywhere on the internet as Macaroni on Twitter, Instagram, really, wherever. Um, I am currently here on Mondays and Fridays, and... We had some tech issues tonight, but that's okay. Uh, tonight, I am going to be playing Chance, who is a biologist with a questionable control of his feet. Sounds about right. Uh, and narrating this game, I am Val. You can find me at the Kraken's Crown on Twitter and Twitch. Uh, I'm here Thursdays through Mondays playing and running games. Currently running four games on this channel. Red River of Legends on uh, Thursday uh, for one more week and one week only. Uh, come join us next week for the finale of that, uh, as well as this game and two games alternating Saturdays, Saturday Night Star Power and Saturday Night's Mistborn, where we're playing the Mistborn RPG based on the novels by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, but tonight I'm the, as I said, game master, narrator, whatever you want to call me, something, something, something hoodies. Y'all ready to get going? Okay, quick recap previously on 
Neon Souls, you shot down a drone, stealing a piece of aid from your friend Dynamo. Uh, Choke, pulling the trigger on that one. Uh, shortly after arriving in the city of Reclamation. Uh, you caught the thief, Zan, who said they were being threatened by the parsecs to steal this item from Dynamo. Uh, on their behalf. You confronted the leader of the D1 Parsec Squad, a gentleman by the name of Bro Butch Savage. Uh, Butch agreed to let Zan off the hook if you made a fake piece of eight to give to his old man Randy uh, and cut him off uh, a piece of the uh, treasure if it turned out to be the real thing. Uh, you agreed to this offer and Zane, after you were arrived back at the Little Scarlet, looked over the piece and found a strong radioactive isotope contained inside. Very dangerous, very deadly, however safely contained within the metals of this uh, relic. Uh, Zane would do some research on the piece while making duplicates. Uh, and from there, you began your construction on the Little Scarlet upgrades, adding an ion field, a cloaking field, and most importantly, a habitat module so you can all have a place to live that's where we ended our session last time so jumping back in um well there are a couple things that we could do uh i and i'm really gonna leave it up to y'all uh you have a little bit of um downtime where you can uh figure out you can you know, have some scenes with your other uh crew members um or you can do anything else so i'm, I'm kind of leaving it open to y'all uh, i'd also like to kind of get an idea of where your um what your habitat modules how you're setting those up um this whole process is going to take a couple days while you're waiting to uh, uh for everything to be installed um but anyone have any ideas or anyone want to want to go first At the very least, there's just a fucking montage of, of impulse finally getting to do something. Um, running around with like paint swatches and and fabric swatches and managing to pull in a, a mattress of some kind that basically fills the entire room and. Um, just afghans and then just just oh and soundproofing most important that's for everyone else's sake i think everyone should exactly to, yeah to have it's that really it. for everyone else yeah <laughs> it's probably uh, an alco suggestion like near the end of things yeah then let's do a quick scene between you and alco setting this up i think uh, there's a bit of like grunting out in the hall as Alco is hauling in a, uh, a mattress uh, that he has spent his entire cut almost from this uh, last job and getting is a behemoth of a mattress uh, maybe not quite as good as the one that he had before but uh, I mean what really could be mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> rip pulling it in uh you can see, like, sweat already pulling through the back of his uh, gray shirt, uh, uh, his back muscles tensing as he is trying to wedge it into this tight corridor. and uh, says, <clears throat> we couldn't have made the hallways just a little wider in this thing. God damn. And, like, sort of stumbles backwards as he loses his grip. Uh, the mattress half wedged through the door. Impulse probably got distracted by that uh, and forgot that he was actually saying something, so she blinks a little bit. Yeah, well, yeah, y y you know how it is. Y you, the first thing you ever told me was that these things uh, barely have any room for uh, personal items, so. Hmm. Yeah. And, um, well, I'm probably being a little selfish trying to get this in here but god damn it I need a better bed my back is killing me I know so I am willing to sacrifice at least some shelving space for a larger mattress I appreciate that mm -hmm. uh, um, so you're making yourself at home 
trying to. I like the curtains. I feel like it sections it out a little better. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it's just metal. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's nice. Um, maybe a rug be good. Oh, pulls out a little notebook. Right. Color preferences. I'm going to leave that to you. Everything I own is either black or gray. Gray can work. You beige. <laughs> Makes notes. You can almost hear the internal high five as he <laughs> picked the right color. <laughs> huh. um, this is nice, though. Feels a little more like home. home yes hand raised is there artificial gravity in the habitat no <laughs> <laughs> so this entire scene is null is that what you're trying to say mr biologist <laughs> there's artificial gravity when you're there is gravity when you're on station there's gravity here when you're in space the bed's not really going to make that much of a difference or the rug <laughs> Or the clothing rug. My my it's a magic and carpet. And the curtains just like Well, okay, I guess here's the question. Do y'all want artificial gravity in the habitat? Yes. In just yes. the habitat? Yes. Okay. I'm willing to make that work. We, that makes this whole thing make a little more sense. So sleep. Yeah, we yeah. were just thinking. It's like, like wait a minute. <laughs> Listen. Stop pulling us out. You know what? Like we're trying to we're we're, we're trying to get immersed here, okay? We're keeping yeah. the continuity intact. Yes, uh -huh. and y'all. Yes, yes, and Sam. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm fine with saying maybe the artificial gra maybe the habitat has some artificial gravity device. It'd be exclusive to the habitat, but that also will make a lot more sense for how y'all are able to sort of recover yourselves a little bit using the habitat you know having gravity to do things like stretch and work out and not have to deal with the atrophy of a zero g environment over long space treks so i am perfectly happy with that uh i like so, it yeah um god damn i was getting somewhere with this conversation now i've lost it <laughs> making it feel more like home Uh, speaking of which, do we have a plan now? We've done this job. Do y'all have something else lined up? Kind of. Uh, there's really no other way to say this. Um, I think we're tracking down pirate buried treasure. I yeah. think I must have hit my head. You said pirate buried treasure. Space pirate. And a buried treasure, oh, okay. I think, that's, is just more of like an expression. Um, have you heard of this whole pieces of eight thing? The data no. drive? Well, Zane said something about it. He was muttering and throwing something in the engine room the other day. Earlier today. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, explains. Yeah. yeah, he wasn't there for all of that, was he? <laughs> no. Yeah, but um, well, she's putting up more curtains and things, and just like very blase about the whole thing, but explaining what happened. All right, so just hear me out. Uh, we're going to forgo any sort of more lucrative business arrangements to track down an old dead pirate's lost no. ship. No, I'm thinking we're going to continue to take some some regular shipping routes and, you know, continue with our, um, our, our practices in privateering. Um, cause yeah, I, I, I feel like I've got some really good notes from Captain Beetle that I think we can start implementing. Um, oh yeah, I was gonna 
was going to tell a joke about this coat idea that I had. Anyway, um, but, you know, as a side project, I don't know. Zane says that whatever this little PC that we have is legit. All right. Listen, as long as we're still making enough money that I can keep this thing airborne, spaceborne, you get Absolutely. the point. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Somebody's got to be grounded in reality here. And that's you in this scenario, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that'd be me. Just, just to be clear, yeah. okay, okay. Good. I would never ask that of you. I appreciate that. Um, oh. Uh, before I get the mattress the rest of the way in here. Um, like, roots around, like, in the back of his back pocket, pulls out a uh, small box, hands it to you. Says, I didn't spit. I maybe skimped on the mattress a little bit. What's this? I, uh, I don't know. I saw it. I thought I like it. Opens it! Uh, you open the box, uh, and inside is a small, um, well, it's a small disc, and you open it, it's, it's like a compact mirror, um, but it's made out of this very, um, very dark, uh, reflective metal that when it catches the light the right way, it almost has like a, a prismatic sheen to it, uh, it says, uh, hey, look, Nice. I don't really know what it, what it's made out of. The guy at the shop said something about meteorite or something, but it looked pretty. And I know you complain that we don't have enough mirrors around here, so. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. And I just better put it it up a little place like again like there's no shit that furniture is like is very broad term here but yeah, yeah there's a flat surface and she manages to put it up like, there are some shelves uh there's like a foot locker that most of y'all's clothes are in probably a couple foot lockers for the two of you um uh yeah you, you set, set up on a shelf with the mirror open um he smiles as you look at your reflection and um I still spent the most most of it on the mattress, but no, I didn't. appreciate it. I didn't get the super deluxe. I just went with the deluxe. So. I figured the super deluxe probably would have gotten completely wedged in the hallway. So I mean, yeah. it's probably for the best. Yeah. Looks back at the door, grimaces. <laughs> so he tries to think about how he's going to get the mattress through the hallway in here. Um. Maybe we get some dinner later. Yeah. I'd like that. Cool. Uh, all right. I'm going to stretch this a little bit. All right. See if I can get this in here without having to cut it in half. Before it gets too far, she'll just reach up. Yep, yes. Uh, he smiles as y'all separate and goes back to heaving and straining and she'll go back to watching respectfully. <laughs> nice. Uh, Clarity, Chance, y'all have any ideas for y'all's habitat rooms? Um, I think Clarity's is like pretty small because she's she she miss she misses her closet kind of. <laughs> going back um, to the roots yeah. but yeah it's pretty small and just like enough for like maybe like a mattress and then like her computer stuff and i think hers is like next to zane's probably sure y'all took the rooms next to each other sort of awkwardly moving your stuff in like yeah sideways glances that sort of thing uh i imagine clarity's room is still mostly like screens and monitors 
for mm-hmm. for her rig um, and just like a cot in the center and the uh, yeah. to the side. Any other distinguishing features of her room other than those? She wanted like a really nice chair, so she probably has like. A good a good chair and she'll probably end up sleeping in a chair more than her cot okay imagine this like future gamer chairs it's probably like it's very nicely like padded and stuff maybe it's like like hover it's like a, like a magna plate underneath so it, like hovers yeah. off the ground yeah i like that uh so i'm i'm thinking that you're in there you've got your the shelves with your stuff on it computers wires everything kind of hardwired in the best you could zane probably helped to like pull some panels off the wall so you could wire in your your computers like directly to the ship's power supply and not mm-hmm. deal with uh whatever a space outlet would look like um uh alfredo is currently like walking across some of the shelves like jumping from one to the other batting things off of the shelves and watching them fall to the floor uh and there is a knock um at the door to your room and as you uh turn to uh look you see kind of leaning up against the door frame is ghost or aria so uh just uh putting finishing touches on my Peters and stuff. Uh, what's up? Oh, nothing. I wanted to see how your room was coming along. Uh, she steps in and goes up to, like, pet Alfredo, who just, like, bites onto her metallic arm like he always does. She doesn't even react as she continues to, like, scritch behind his ears. Uh, he starts to purr. Uh, she says, You know, you could have had a bigger space than this. I don't really need a bigger space. Fair. Um, hey, I want to show you something. Um, you done here for a bit? Yeah. Cool. Come on. Uh, she leads you down the hall, uh, to her room, um, which is, uh, down. I'm imagining, like, a long line, like, of corridors here, this module being added, and just, like, two rows of these room habitat rooms Mm -hmm. uh, in there and uh she leads you down to hers which is probably near the end uh near the uh like the airlock that leads to the next section of the ship and um she uh heads inside uh for you to follow her room's larger than yours uh but equally like minimalistically decorated um just a like a cot in the corner uh but everything along the walls is just like mounted weapons racks um and there's a big like spot in the center uh where there's this like uh circular pad down on the on the floor uh like a wrestling mat almost or like a training uh spot and there's like a a dummy there too uh and she says what do you think this is really cool yeah yeah. I really had my own uh, room before. I mean, yeah. I I had a place. Uh, well, I had places that were given me when I was under contract, but uh, nothing that I could really decorate myself. Um. All right. Well, she uh, moves across the room and uh, kind of turns the face. She says. punch me (coughs) it's not gonna hurt very much I doubt you're gonna be able to hit me anyway come on Uh, I'm gonna have you roll uh, do you have fight uh, or or, (laughs) weapons do you have weapons (laughs) no can she invoke sibling no I do I have weapons and athletics okay uh, all right. I think this would be. Let me double check because I think no, no, no. This would just be straight up fight. This wouldn't be oh. uh, weapons. I don't have fight. Okay, then uh, let's roll fight, and she's gonna roll to contest you. Siblings always get a plus two to hit each other, but since they're both siblings, it kind of cancels <laughs> each other out. So <laughs> it's a minus one. Uh, she rolls a 
level three. Uh, <laughs> so you uh, you move towards uh, towards her, and as you go for just a very weak punch, uh, she actually grabs your wrist uh, and like spins you over, and it's just a flash, and you've just like slammed against the the floor. Um, it's padded, so it's not too bad. You don't take any damage, but uh, you were stunned for a second. Oh. Come on. She holds a hand down to help you up. Why why are we doing this? Uh cuz shit's dangerous out here. And I'm worried about you. Yeah, like I said earlier, I think I'm the only hacker I know of who's who's not also fighty and stuff, so Yeah. Well, cuz the ones that aren't uh usually don't go out into the field. Yeah, I gotta stop doing that. But it's more fun if I do. I'm not gonna expect you to stop. I mean, if anything, you're good in the field. Helps you think on your feet. But if you're gonna keep doing that, you need to actually take that seriously. There's gonna be some problems you can't hack your way out of. Right, I'm not very good at talking the way of stuff either, so... So, what's the only other option? Punching things? Yeah. We can work on some other stuff. I mean, you're not really going to bulk up very... I'm not going to ask you to get yoked just to defend yourself, but um, I can show you a few things with uh, some some tricks that I've got. Um, maybe teach you how to use a few of these. She gestures to the weapons on the wall. Can you teach me how to use the laser sword? Yeah, I could teach you how to use the laser sword. You don't start with the laser sword, though. You start with that one. She gestures over to, like, a uh, like a padded, like a rubber sword uh, for training purposes uh, in the uh, in the corner uh, that's kind of mounted in a little, like, stand. Uh, she says, you start with that. And then you move to that. She points to a metal one. And then you go to the laser sword. But because we're siblings, you're going to let me go straight to the laser <coughs> sword, right? Not on your life. Fine. You either need to get better at talking your way into or out of things, and maybe I'll let you have the laser sword, or you need to get better at using the sword. One of those two. I'll talk to Impulse. <laughs> I know that you can take something seriously, so I, I just, I'm not going to be out in the field with you all the time. Somebody's got to stay back and take care of the ship or whatever else y'all need me to do. But I'd feel a lot better if it knew that you could handle yourself. Well, then I guess I should train more. No time like the present. Like right now, right now? Yeah, right now, right now. Well, but I was gonna pet Alfredo and then go talk to Zane and then... Fine right now. Speaking of Zane... What's up with that? Oh, I thought he was mad at me, but then I thought he was mad at me for not talking to him because I thought he was mad at me. And I realized he wasn't mad at me at all, but then I got used to not talking to him. But now we're, it's fine, we're talking now. God, I used to think you were a genius. I am a genius. At some things. Do you need advice with that? Like, like the things that sisters do like relationship advice sort of stuff because I don't feel qualified to really give it but I mean I can try have you ever had a relationship before uh not one that I wasn't inevitably going to kill them sounds healthy um yeah I mean my past relationships were just like I'm going to sleep with you and then not do anything else, so. Well, we 
kind of got that in common. Um, yeah, I'm not really good with the whole like relationship thing, but one piece of advice, it seems, based on my observations, like talking typically helps. Yeah, I, I have realized that one. You know, rather than going to Impulse for the sword lessons, maybe you come to me for the sword stuff and you go to Impulse for that. Yeah. I feel like she'd like to talk about that kind of stuff, which kind of scares me when it comes to talking to her about that kind of stuff, so. Just don't show weakness. She's like a shark. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, cool. Well, uh, good, good talk. Are, are we going to practice with the rubber sword now? Yep. Or... Get a sword. Yes. Uh, you go get your, your padded sword, and the two of you do some training. While that's going on. Chance. What does Chance's room look like? <clears throat> um, a nightmare. <laughs> so in Chance's room, um, I think that over their past traveling, he's probably ac- accumulated a fair amount of like wet specimens that he has hanging out on shelves in his room. Um, he has like a resident botany project that is like clippings he, he probably found on other asteroids or planets or just in trade that he's trying to grow and see if they can, you know, do anything with. Um, He's not the cleanest, but he's not super dirty. So there's just kind of clothes everywhere. Um, Dude's dude's just a mess. (laughs) Um, He does have like a cot or a hammock. He sleeps in a hammock, um, which is really great for his, uh, you know, wonderful ability to move (laughs) that sounds terrible um (laughs) so i imagine you are uh like surveying the room trying to figure out how like like a last few bits to place somewhere around the cluttered mess uh and you hear a, a voice uh you hear uh phoebus uh behind you uh in the doorway kind of whistles and says you know we've only been in here for like a day how did you make such a mess well you think this is a mess but this is me clean well um yikes I'm sorry, I know it's a lot. No, no, it's funny. I've always been a bit of a neat freak, or I feel like I've been a neat freak. That part's still a bit muddled, but... um, Oh, I uh, brought this for you. Like, picks up uh, something that was sitting on the floor that you didn't notice at first. Uh, it is a... Uh, in, it is a small potted plant. Oh, I... I don't think I've seen this variety before. I like the flowers. It looks like it's got maybe some teeth in there. Lovely. Yeah. Um, I was told it was a hybrid uh, between a lemon tree, an orange tree, and a shark. So, uh, yeah, uh, it seemed right up your alley. We we'll call it the lark plant. I like it. Thank you. And he puts it just on that shelf that has like maybe, you know, some potting soil that just is kind of spilled out and such, but he puts it up there. <laughs> uh, I, I've been looking around. Uh, Zane has been going on supply runs to pick up shit for this project he's working on. And um, yeah, they had a actually a pretty big market just down the road um, uh, near the town center and uh, 
they've got a lot of neat stuff there. Might be worth checking out. Yeah, I think that sounds like I should definitely go take a look. Would you like to come with me? Yeah, definitely. Mean, yeah, that was. I was sort of going to invite you, but that works too. Yeah, definitely. Perfect. Um, we can go really whenever. We're just kind of waiting right now. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm free. I'm probably going to have to make another run later today. Uh, he needs a lot of metal. Um, so they didn't have everything that I needed, so they could ship it in later. So um, maybe this afternoon we can run over, yeah. see what you'd like, maybe get you a, uh, a Roomba. That sounds perfect. Um, I just have to make sure there's no clothes on the floor. I don't think vacuums work well with clothes. No. Do you have a... Do you have something to put your clothes in? I just usually took them to the laundry when I was ready. Maybe we'll get you... Uh... A, a foot locker too everybody else has one i think uh impulse confiscated half of them for herself so we might need a few more that sounds like a grand idea yeah all right i'll um i'll make a list we can uh run over check it out see if we find anything fun i think that sounds great i look forward to it all right i'll uh come grab you later Perfect. I'll see you then. Uh, he smiles and he uh, leaves the room. Cute. <laughs> All right, I'm done with the cute stuff, y'all. But but okay. No, I'm not done with it. Never be done with it. Uh, just move into different music. Um. Uh, we had the upgrades. Was there anything? So, obviously, Chance and uh, Zane are now going to be, or not Zane, uh, Phoebus are going to be making a, uh, a run to the to the market later today. Um, do is there anything anybody else wants to do during their time off? Any supplies that you might need? Any real booze? actual booze the good stuff the franzia you know just the good stuff oh i forgot we made franzia like the top it's the label. high end well it's the yeah. oldest swinery so <laughs> yeah yeah but yes definitely looking for the good stuff i'm debating if Clarity wants to drag Zane out to the markets too, because they haven't been on a date since they went to see Rock'em Sock'em Love and Live, so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we could we can play it. Do you want to go? You want to go ask Zane? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you uh, you head to the engine room and you just hear like clanging of metal you hear some welding uh, there's like flashing of lights from around the corner uh, as you round inside there's like a little bit of smoke hanging in the air and you see uh, Zane has like diagrams uh, like pinned up with magnets to the wall has a bunch of this like of metal just like pieces cut out from these big sheets of like uh, of some sort of silver metal you can't exactly identify what it is on first glance but um, currently trying to cut out pieces and is right now etching something on a triangular piece of one that he has cut out uh, and uh, notices you and sort of jumps for a second says, oh, shit uh, hey Claire uh, should I have knocked? Uh, no 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 um one second, let me just uh, clean up in here. It, like turns on a vent fan and uh, oh, shit. Uh, what's up? Um, I mean you seem busy, so I don't I don't want to bother you. 
No, no, not busy. I just have to make, what, three of these in the next, like, day now, and I haven't slept or eaten. You haven't See, slept or eaten? The sun. Um, what time is it? I don't know. I haven't checked, and I haven't gone outside, so... Okay. Uh... It could be the middle of the night. I'm not sure. Right. I sort of lost track, too. Uh, looks down, like, grabs his data pad off the bench next to him, looks at it. Shit. Yeah, it's been a bit. Uh, yeah, no, a little bit busy. Sorry. Um, we haven't gotten a talk. Um, just trying to get this done. Right. Uh, so then I guess I probably shouldn't ask you to go out to the market stuff with me. Please do. Would you like to go look at stuff in the market? He's already she... taking off the goggles and like <laughs> pulling off the apron and stuff. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Are you sure? Because you seem really busy. No, no, I'm good. Just if anyone asks, this was your idea. <laughs> I mean, it was my idea. I, I came in here and I, 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 I asked. Yeah, I just don't, I just don't want, just don't want impulse yelling at me when this doesn't get done on time. I mean, as long as you get one done on time. Yeah, I uh, might be good. Might get some inspiration walking around for a bit. Um, no, I would love to go walk around town with you. I haven't seen anything outside of the hangar yet, so. Cool. Um, let's go. All right. Yeah, great. Um, the two of you go heading out. And what do we get like a convergence of Phoebus and Chance and Clarity? And or do we want to do this completely separately? You're at the farmer's market today, too. Hey, <laughs> I think, I think, yeah, they, <laughs> they would probably run into one another leaving the ship. Yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so while you're uh, while you're leaving the ship, uh, the two of you come down the ramp as uh, you see uh, what like Chance uh, like waiting at the bottom, and then like coming down behind y'all, uh, behind y'all, out of the, kind of jogging out is Phoebus. Uh, it's like, sorry, I found it, but oh, hey y'all. Hey Phoebus, remember anything yet? Are you gonna ask me that like every time? Yep. See it. I mean, I have for the past six months, so. Yeah, it never gets old. No. I mean, I I'm just wondering. You never know when you might just like hit your head and everything comes rushing back. That's not how amnesia works. Hit your head and everything comes rushing back. Well, sure. uh, looks the same. Oh, I was, we were heading out. I was going on the supply run, Zane's like, Oh, no, um, we're gonna go out. You don't have to. Well, no, it's fine. If you want us to go and st stay here, go not get... And there's, like, this awkward moment. They're both looking at each other. Like, we were both gonna be going out to the same place to get the same things, and then they both look to the two of you. Why don't we just go together? And we can find the supplies together. Zane says... Sounds great to me. Yeah, um, let's uh, we'll go together then. Yeah, sounds great. Uh, let's go. Perfect. Let's go. This is the most awkward double date. <coughs> okay, so the two of you head towards the market. Is Impulse also there looking for booze <laughs> right now? Maybe. feeling too we'll, we can do this afterwards after after the shopping episode uh but uh impulse is also gonna probably be out and about listening for um anyone talking about you know old pirate stories you know like like about the davy drive and you know all of the uh the all all that so yeah but but yes she absolutely needs to get like a case of francia or else she's gonna go <laughs> A little nuts. Uh, 
we can do some of that at the same time. Uh, so yeah, we can say that impulse is out, kind of killing two birds with one stone. Um, well, two. Well, you're on your double date. Maybe you haven't converged yet, but you're all in the market district. It's it's a big district. When I say like market, like there are hundreds of like vendors here, uh, big piles of crap that they are hawking. Um, most of it illicit. Yes. Are we keeping the stuff that we said about um, this area? The episode before the quiet year episode, where we like added stuff to the yes world, because like. There was like the augmented reality thing. Yes. Uh, so there is a uh, VR, AI. so there is a like a subset to the culture. Like, yeah, if you, there's a whole AR VR world essentially set up yeah. there too. So, uh, I, I mean, it, typical to what you're used to is that there are all sorts of like AR projected displays over uh, like the vendor stalls and across and as you're like walking up um a lot of the like vendor uh, areas are like automated so you get too close to one of the stalls and a uh like a v or like a holographic uh uh vendor will appear and be like buy my wares traveler and that sort of thing um that that sort of bullshit uh but yeah there in addition to that there is the that component is there something specifically you wanted to look into while you're doing no i think clarity just like puts on her goggles to like give you like some overlay setting and like yeah. if anyone else is using the ar vr stuff like they'll see her as her like bunny avatar okay um yeah so you've got your your goggles on as you're walking and yeah you're seeing this like so the actual vendor stalls, like you're still seeing them in this AR, but also in addition to that, like buzzing above you, you see like crowds of people like gathering with little like chat dialogues appear and kind of folding in and out and people popping in for conversations and stuff, uh, like buzzing with information all around you. Um, everyone's uh, like uh, display names uh, hovering above their heads. Um, uh yeah uh, i don't think anyone initially like no, approaching you right now but um you are aware of that if you want to take uh, take advantage of any of it um otherwise uh zane and phoebus are kind of leading the the two of you around uh is there something you specifically want to look for while you're here <clears throat> sorry um I guess Chance is, again, just looking for, you know, <laughs> interesting specimens in general. Yeah. Uh, yes, we can do that. Um, hmm. <laughs> uh, you, yeah, yeah, we can do this. So, um, you pass a couple of vendors selling like scrap metal and small duties electronic devices salvaged from from ships uh but there's one that has um some exotic uh creatures in cages uh behind them all kind of like squawking hissing burbling spewing acid uh in wonderful containment uh like a, a whole menagerie of of beasties um and, and this is where uh, we run into razor yeah <laughs> <laughs> no razor is already no i guess razor might be here hmm. <laughs> would razor still be on the ship razor may be skulking around here looking for stuff too uh actually no i think yeah as you come to the shop you see somebody like turning around and the sort of hunched over kind of scraggly hair messed uh figure of razor he's got like a uh like a cylindrical object in his hand that's also like enshrouded with uh with some sort of fabric over it and kind of tied up uh to to obscure whatever's inside turns around says Oh, hey, everyone. Hello, Razor. What have you got in there? Oh, nothing, nothing. It's uh, just a little pet project, you know. Uh, and the whole thing kind of like shifts and, and like something like bashing its way around inside. So... 
Oh, it can't be a living thing. I mean, Alfredo would just eat it. I don't plan on letting it anyone near your cat, so. Well, I mean, my cat kind of goes everywhere on the ship, so. I'm not planning on letting it out of here. Um, That's also a fair bit bigger than Alfredo. Oh, Alfredo eats things bigger than it all the time. Does his jaw unhinge? Yeah. <gasps> I've yet to see that. You've got to show me next time that happens. You hear a sound from inside of it just going like, oh. I really need to get this back and hooked up. Uh, I'll, I'll see y'all in a bit. This is a great store. Uh, check out later. <laughs> he just goes like hur- hurrying off as the thing is shaking in his hands. Wonderful. Um, the <laughs> the vendor uh, who just sold the uh, creature to Razor sees the four of you and um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to get a visual in my head the it, uh, it's a woman uh, fairly like heavy set wearing this big like red uh coat that's got like a fuzzy kind of like boa like a frill collar like built into it uh her hair is dyed like in rainbow colors and kind of uh put pinned up over her head uh and she has this big kind of gaudy uh necklace uh of these like gold beads on it and she says why hello there how can i help you um, I just saw your shop uh, as we were passing by, and uh, you well, how could you not, story. darling? <laughs> That's a good point, actually. Please, please, come in, come in. I'll show you what I have. Absolutely, and he just like beelines into the store for the thing. Uh, you're like amidst all the cages. I'm not even gonna try to explain all of the the different creatures on display. Most of them bizarre hybrids of uh, of different things that uh, <laughs> uh, different real world animals, uh, like a like a mouse that's got like the body of a snake, uh, that sort of shit. Um, and she says, "How can I help you? Have you got any air breathing cephalopods?" I'm sorry. Air breathing cephalopods, you know, um, something that might be a cross between an octopus or a squid that is able to breathe air. Hmm. You want a tentacle monster? No, not at all. I just want something that I would be able to research without having a large tank on the ship. They're quite heavy, you know. Well, I may have a. few things that might be but unfortunately or fortunately for me tentacles are on high demand right now but <laughs> I might have some... <laughs> please please come in I don't know who this character is but I love them uh, <clears throat> and she leads you to the back and says hmm, what I have here is a I believe might fit some of the bill and she points to a creature uh, that looks like hmm, uh, it, it's it's got squid like appearances it does have like several tentacles uh, but they are growing from the arms of a uh, looks like a baboon kind of sized creature uh, but with the head of a like a miniature horse chance is just like gobsmacked at this thing it says, not as much cephalopod as and 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 very scant on the tentacles but if you're interested in something like this I could give you a good price for them yeah well marvelous uh, 
Uh, given the transport costs and the demand for creatures like this, um, I'll have to let the other people that wanted it on hold know that it's not longer available. Uh, but I'd be willing to give you a discount as a first-time buyer. Uh, and she rings up a number. I'm going to have... Uh, uh, she, I guess she shows you a number right now uh, that is ludicrously expensive. Oh. Um... Hmm. You know, now that I see that, now that we've uh, sort of decided that this is what I'm going with, I think maybe I'll keep looking around the market for a little bit. Um, I've got some other projects that I'm working on at home, and I think I could probably do something similar. Well, hold on, dear. Let's 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 negotiate. Let's talk. Um, hmm. Uh, I'm gonna have you roll. I'm trying to decide. This would be maybe rapport, maybe deceive. Um, I am average at rapport. Let's do that. Let's go with that. It's not, you weren't necessarily lying. No, I've got projects I'm working on. <laughs> you do have projects you're working on. <laughs> you might be able to make this yourself. Oh, no. <laughs> How did you roll? I've only seen this happen twice. And it's happened in two sessions. The fake dice hate game. me. <laughs> was it Savannah last time that rolled negative? That rolled all four. Yeah. Uh, no, Morgan. Oh yeah. Was it me. Morgan? Yeah. God. So that's four negatives with a plus one brings it to a so minus it's negative three. three. <laughs> you can re-roll. I only have one refresh. <laughs> Do you want to spend your one refresh? <laughs> I don't. Not for this. Well, let it's me probably better that I don't have this thing anyway. And see if she also rolls four negatives. No, she rolls a one. Hmm. Well, unfortunately, if you're not willing to bargain or make a deal and you can't come provide me an attractive counter offer, then I will save this for the next buyer. And she kind of scoots the cage away even though she didn't even move it for you to see <laughs> in the first place wait wait um are you a purveyor or do you have need of a purveyor for exotic plants i'm not really in the horticultural circle as you might say unless there happen to be some genetic modifications to said plants. Well, most of my plants have genetic modifications. I'm talking uh -huh. of the, the, the fauna in by uh, sort of. Ah. He sits there and thinks for a long minute. <laughs> You, 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 you just you just got a lemon orange shark tree. You're yeah, not but going Phoebus to gave it to trade him. your lark for this thing. <laughs> Phoebus is standing much? right there. <laughs> yeah, no, no. How how much did she say it was? Uh, an exorbitant amount. Right. Um, Clarity's gonna pack some money in. Okay. You. You're gonna have to roll resources for this if that's no. The right I'm not just gonna let you have an infinite money hack in this game. This is not gonna show <laughs> up on a YouTube video for how to infinitely hack money in your fate. I no, I just so I can't use hack. So what you can do is you can roll resources and you could uh, invoke your hacker ability to assist you on the roll. How do I invoke that? You spend a fate point. And you can do it after. Uh, you can either add a plus two or you can re-roll it. Either way, you get an oh, advantage right. on the roll. Essentially, you can roll first and then... Uh, I don't have anything plus resources. That's why I wanted to use hack. <coughs> uh, I didn't turn off the D&D &D redemptions for this. Parkabeth, I can't give you D&D &D inspiration. <laughs> a, I'm running this all myself. <laughs> <laughs> You can't give me inspiration for this? No, I can't. I'll redeem that or I'll give you, uh, I'll, I'll redeem that for you or uh, refund you for that, Perkabeth. Um, there is, we do have 
stuff for fate though, so hold on. Uh, <laughs> I forgot that the uh, the chat stuff. Val is really like good. a one them <laughs> band tonight, so please yeah. bear with us, friends. Please bear with me. Okay, so. Or fate ones. Okay, so uh, there is okay. There is a fate invoke. Um, well, we can leave it because there is a redemption that I believe is the same for the D and D one, uh, which is allowed a character to invoke an aspect for free. Um, so we could do that instead. I still think that I should be able to roll hack. Just roll resources. That is not the outcome. The outcome you are going for here is to try to gain resources. There is a role for this specifically, which is resources. I've let you bullshit your way into hack rolls <laughs> for too long, Morgan. But I haven't rolled a hack roll this entire third season. Well, start actually hacking stuff then. I'm That's trying I'm to, you. and you won't let me. Uh, no, Morgan. okay. So just roll resources. <laughs> Well, fine. It's a one. That is a one. Uh, so you have a free invocation from the uh, from the chat. You could invoke that to get a plus two on the roll to bring that up to a three if you wanted. Suppose I will do that. Okay. Uh, with a three, that is fair. Nope, that's good, I believe, on the ladder. Yeah. Uh, I would say that is sufficient for purchasing uh, or buying something at this store. Um, so what, you hack the money right onto uh, Chance's, into Chance's account? Yeah. Okay. Chance, you get a ding on your data pad and you look down, there are a lot more zeros in your account than were previously. Oh! Well, look at that. It looks like my um, <clears throat> last payment for uh, my research project has come through. Um, I think I will be able to get that after all. Well, now, so we're doing business then. Excellent. For the number I specified then. Of course. Fantastic. And she kind of, her cape or her cloak kind of uh billows underneath her as she spins uh and she moves over and pulls the cage back out the baboon horse octopus uh whinnies slash screeches <laughs> uh, when you when she pulls it out and she pushes it across to you and says just have them sent directly to my account and this is yours of course, and I just yeah. You send it over. Stuff ding, she looks at us. She's excellent doing business with you, darling. I do hope when you receive your next paycheck that you come to our shop. Of course, I will probably be seeing you again. Wonderful. Can I offer anything for the companions that you have with you? No, I already have an alien. All right, well, if you're ever in the market for selling, just let me know. Actually, do you have any, like, small things that I could feed to a larger alien? Yes, plenty. You're looking for food supplies for your... Creature. Yeah, I was thinking about just, like, he needs some enrichment. So I was thinking of, like, getting some, like, little, like, rodent-type things to just set loose on our ship. And then uh, he can just hunt them down. Perhaps in your own room. No, I mean, the ship is much bigger than my room. My room's kind of small. It, it, Zane casts up and says, maybe <coughs> just some, like, kibble or something. I... Oh, Alfreda really likes, like, live prey. I've noticed. Um, okay, he just kind of steps back. <laughs> she says... I do have several varieties of rodent chat if you're interested in purchasing. <laughs> Please peruse and find what works best for you. Uh, they're on the far aisle over there. We hey, have thanks. to name this character. I want her all the time. I, I have suggested both Deirdre and Yolanda. 
do you like either of those, Val? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, I, I had a, a idea, I had a name in mind, but I'm perfectly fine with either one of those, so that's what we're going to go with. In you my choose. head, I was thinking somewhere along the lines of Madame Moxie or something like that, but uh, <laughs> but I like also like Madame Deirdre. Yeah, that's, that sounds I good. Like, yeah. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Dr. Madame Deirdre, M.D. Dr. Madame Deirdre. I love her. I love her. Uh, <laughs> the the capture just went, Dr. Madame, Dr. Dre, M.D. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Amazing. I'm not going to have you roll to buy pray for your creature clarity what kind of mice what kind of rodents are you looking for? are you looking for like rats sized creatures or like little little like lab mice sized i think something a little bit more insect like because otherwise i feel sad <laughs> so uh. like mice sized insects oh then what you're looking for are my Mouse tarantulas is where I was going with that. <laughs> and that's where we're going. <laughs> she points to you a small box of um <laughs> of there's there's only one in it. It's just a small box of this white fuzzy looks like a mouse, but it has eight legs and a head like a tarantula. <laughs> she says one word of warning on that. They do reproduce through mitosis, so if you, they will replicate. So I can just but buy one. I will only charge you for the one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. All righty then, and she pulls it out and sells it to you. You have enough credit for that. It's it, this is negligible, so I'm, I'm not. I'm putting that at like a zero because it's food. But you now have <laughs> replicating mouse tarantulas that you are going to let loose on your ship for food. You've created a horrible problem. <laughs> uh, Why is it always you? <laughs> I love it. I'm so happy. Sid does not love it. Sid has left the stream. Oh, there. <laughs> do, do we need to change it? Do I need to... Do we need to X card this and change it to something else, Sid? No. It's fine. I don't want to cause just... you any distress when these things have fully overtaken this. Oh screen. my god! <laughs> Um, Clarity has like her little carton with the thing in it and just leans over to Chance and is just like, so can you genetically modify this so that it doesn't replicate that fast? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's not a hard thing to do. You just put in a um, genetic blocker that has to be activated. Cool, let's do that. Otherwise I feel like I'm gonna be murdered by like half the people on our ship. Yeah, myself included. Are you nope. afraid of mouse triangles? Oh no, I just think there would be a nightmare to take care of. Well, we're not taking care of them. Alfredo's going to eat them. Well, if they replicate, obviously you'd have to end up doing something about them. No, that's why we have Alfredo, to take care of the mouse tarantulas on our ship. If it takes care of all of them, then you don't have any more mouse tarantulas to replicate to feed Alfredo. No, that's why we need it to replicate at just the right amount so that it replicates enough so that there's Enough for Alfred to eat, but not so much that there's an infestation. Yeah, we can do that. <coughs> Nothing has ever gone wrong in any sort of sci-fi property when you attempted to restrict the breeding of a monstrous creature. I'm naming these Malcolmoids after Dr. Ian Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> Life little finds creatures are called. Life that is like the first thing I said. Because we really, we really didn't pause to think whether we should, uh, did we? No, we're just wondering if we could. Uh, Savannah's gonna come back next week and just leave. 
She's <laughs> super upset about what we've done. Oh boy. She'll walk in, sit down, walk back out again. Already holds the carton up to Zane. Isn't it cute? Uh, yeah, it's adorable. Are those pincers? Yeah, it's kind of a bummer that we have to feed it to Alfredo. You could just put him on a wet food diet, maybe? I thought this was the wet food diet. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. I just don't want to have to watch him eat these. Oh, no, you probably won't see him. He's very stealthy. Great. Cool. Cool. I'm going to lock my door when we get back. Alfredo's warmed up to you, hasn't he? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's only bitten me a few times this week. He's got to stop doing that. He doesn't bite me at all anymore. Yeah, I think he's just moved on to biting everyone else. Mm, I bet I can train that out of him. Lots of positive reinforcement. I mean, I feel like he's been biting less, so the positive reinforcement is working. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine everyone on the little Scarlet has little kitty bites <laughs> all over their calves and forearms. Probably. Except Impulse. Impulse just looks at Freddy, and Freddy, like, hisses and runs away. Uh, I do need to add a couple of things now. So, NPC, Doctor, Madam, Deirdre, Deirdre, MD. <laughs> MD. Okay. I love her. I love her. And then I'm going to add to your ship a plentiful amount of Malcolmoids. And a squid chimp horse. And a, which I haven't named yet. Does it have like a bird beak at the very end of its like horse mouth? Like a squid? Yes. So a squid beak. Yeah. <laughs> it has a squid beak on a horse head on a baboon body with squid tentacles. I hate this thing. I love it so much. Thanks, I hate it! <laughs> and <laughs> I'm just going to name it Mistake. <laughs> it's a mistake. I uh, know. I don't. I don't have a, gen a genus for this thing. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, I'll come up with something great for it. I imagine a lot of the creatures in uh, Madame Deirdre's shop uh, do not have formal designations because they are literally just mistakes. She got a lot of inspiration from Avatar, I guess. <laughs> three different animals in one. Except these aren't cute at all. No. No, they are not. Uh, so, <laughs> you have your creatures, your critters. Uh, let's let's pop over to Impulse real quick. You were doing some snooping slash shopping. Probably mm -hmm. some Franzia. Yes. Um, looking for pirate lore. Yes. Okay. Uh, what do I have you roll here? Do I have anything fun for this? There's like there is investigate is a is an option. Um, there's also it depends on how you how you want to approach this. Um, it would really determine which uh, skill you'd want to use. So you can let me know uh, and I, whether you have any stunts that apply. Uh, well, I have like a fun thing for rapport. Uh, if, if, if she gets to chatting with somebody. Um, yeah, I guess probably trying to chat up uh, the, the, the booze vendor uh, about like any old timers in the area uh, that might know some of the good stories, uh, which bars to head to for that sort of thing. Okay. Um, yeah. uh, rapport then I think sounds the most appropriate. And then I have a fun thing called best foot forward twice per session. If I get a, I may upgrade a boost that I receive with rapport into a full situation aspect with a 
free invocation. Okay. I'm going to, before you roll, mm -hmm. uh, the difficulty for this, I think it's mostly coming around the, like, tight-lipped nature of a lot of the uh, folk around here, especially towards strangers. Um, I'm going to put this at a difficulty, but but again, uh, I don't think this is extremely hard to do. There's a lot of people here. Um, so I'll put this at a two. Okay. I will roll on roll for now. I have fate dice coming in the mail. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Ah, well, all cancels out. So a four. A four. Okay. Uh, so that is a success um on this uh overcome roll uh yeah i think you ask around and a few people within like the the booze vendor that you're uh talking to uh Schmoozin. says well if you're looking for stories around here a lot of the uh would be the word hollers uh, they tend to hang out over at the I need a name for a pirate bar sailor bar we have the baked bean we had I think that's the only bar we came the rusty up. hole because hole is for space and ships water and ships. ships and space ships rusty hole Adding that to the list. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think you're gonna find them out over that way. A lot of them hang out there, trade stories, drinks. Might have to lubricate them a little bit to get them to share I with you. But much. yeah, just throw them right down there. Can't miss it. Great. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm gonna leave this case uh, for my boyfriend to pick up later. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Like the, the just gigantic case of Franzia. Uh, all right. Yes, Perkabeth. I also realized as soon as I said it that I could have been taken that way too. Uh, but we're gonna go with it because it's in on in on par for everything else that we're <laughs> we're doing in this game. Yes, H U L L, not H O L E. <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> uh you head over down to this uh bar and uh head inside there's a lot of like freight haulers here um people that make long runs between the uh along the the kuiper uh bypass uh hauling shit for the uh some for the corporations, for contracts. Most of the people here would probably be smugglers. Um, most of the the actual uh, like sanctioned cargo haulers would stop at a more reputable place, but there are a couple that have good reputations around here. Um, so a lot of seedy folks um, hanging around this uh, this this bar, which is essentially looks like it is built out of the hull of a derelict spaceship uh, that was probably hauled into here uh, during the initial construction of the settlement. This is around the outside of the perimeter of D1 uh, post-expansion of the dome um, where uh, a lot of these are, are were not uh, corporate constructions. Um, and yeah, there's a fair amount of people uh, kind of drinking, sharing stories. Uh, and you see over at the bar uh, probably picking out one uh, old-timer uh, currently sitting at the bar, uh, talking to the uh, bartender, gets another uh, uh, dark colored drink. Uh, they begin to uh, nurse as they are watching a projected uh, display above them of some, uh, I'd say, some sort of like combat sport uh, currently portrayed uh, on top of the bar. It's like five year old reruns of Mama Matt. Yes. MMA technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My man. Uh, oh, man. So, yeah, they are. Uh, there's a fight on the TV uh, or on the projection, and the uh, yeah, they're they're currently on their own, uh, not not there with anyone. It's 
sits down, tries to find the opportune time to like jump in of someone like telling a story and being like, what was that? Oh, are you a little low? Could I buy you a drink? Yeah, that whole thing. Okay, so you're trying to insert yourself into like a group instead of talking to this person that's on their own. Well, I figure maybe they'd start talking to the bartender or something. So maybe. yeah, whoever whoever's chatting. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you, you kind of join in some stories that are thrown around. Um, a lot of them here. Uh, some of the the pirating the the swashbuckling types uh sharing some stories of hauls that they've had not a lot of people going into just in, in unless you probe further going into any sort of history of like you know getting anything into anything that deep mostly like recent stuff tall tales of uh outrunning uh uh some corporate frigates uh in their last uh haul and you know trying to uh you know saying they outgunned seven fighters at the uh the what the, I'm trying to remember the, the corporation names offhand in my list uh, going back to season one i know right that the omnitrust uh uh, sent after them and they they outmaneuvered them by, by creating having some outlandish stunt through the uh, asteroid fields there and so so on and so forth uh, what do you she'll, say to kind of get us to like a conversation she'll like drop in something along the lines of oh well <laughs> okay yeah next you're going to tell me you've got the Davy drive on your ship huh <laughs> Uh, a lot of them laugh. They laugh real hard at that uh, because most of them take it as a as a joke um, and are uh, you know think it's think it's hysterical and kind of I, I'm rolling forward your rapport from before. Uh, you know they don't take any any side of it, but they also don't like engage in that further. This uh, this old timer sitting at the bar next to you, she um, kind of pauses mid sip. <sighs> Uh, kind of out of the corner, like very low, not really, like almost as an aside to the point where she probably wasn't even expecting you to hear it. Says, uh, she didn't go making light of our history like that. I wasn't meaning to make light. Yeah, sure you weren't. Well, I can guarantee he probably doesn't have the Davy Drive on board his ship. She turns her head and looks down the bar. Yeah, he don't look much like the pirate King Thatch to me. <laughs> Not quite. So you are well versed in the pirate lore. Uh, she looks to you. She's uh, again very sort of grizzled veteran type uh, uh, has a few like pock scars uh, along the side of her face uh, looks like she's been in a fair bit of uh, combat in her time um, very short gray hair kind of slightly spiked up um, looks like she probably shaves it regularly but hasn't cut it in a while um, wearing a, a beaten brown duster and uh, she says yeah no more around here than most Well, I would love to hear more. Yeah, sure. So you can go on making fun of some old coot that shares the ghost stories and legends no. and shit like that. Not at all. I um actually ran into very interesting privateer the other day who reminded me that we could all learn a little something from our history, as you said. <clears throat> yeah, so some old timer filled your head full of dreams and stardust, and now you're looking to chase down some treasure yourself now? I wouldn't go that far. No, it's it can be fun to parse through uh, you know 
why certain things stick around in history and, uh, you know, figure out uh, what they really were back in the day, you know? What's your name? Oh, I'm Impulse. She just, like, looks at your hand and then sort of grabs it and shakes it. At the last second, turns it to the side. She's learning. She's learning. <laughs> Folks around here call me Blue. Blue. Pleasure. What's your business, Impulse? Oh, a little bit of freight, a little bit of privateering. Pretty common around these parts. You got a ship? Mm hmm. What's his name? Little Scarlet. <sighs> Haven't heard of it. Wait. Is that that big hunk of junk sitting over in, uh, <clears throat> sitting up in, uh, I need to remember the Dynamo's hangar. The one and only. Yeah, I did hear something about your... Damn, that thing's an eyesore. Well, she gets the job done. Huh. Y'all taking a bit of haul since you haven't been here. You haven't been here very long, have you? No, no, about a month or two. So, uh, what you want to know about the Davy draft for? Well, I just find the whole thing fascinating, to be honest. Uh-huh. Why a piece of history sticks around like that? I mean, obviously you're going to have your uh, folks that are off for space treasure or something, but, I mean, it has to be at least a lick of truth to it, right? Yeah, I'd say so. Reason why it's stuck around, despite what some of these yuppies might tell you, <clears throat> it's because us old timers remember enough to know our history. I know that just because something's a legend don't mean it's a myth. How so? Well, it's real. Obviously. Though, whether it's still in one piece, I'm not one to say. Way I reckon. Some corporate hauler probably picked it up long ago, refitted it for some piece of prototype tech, and well, we'll all start getting blown out of the sky before too long, but ships we just can't keep up with anymore. I feel like if that were the case, we would have felt the repercussions of that a while back. Seems more likely that it's just floating around in the vacuum of space somewhere. <sighs> well, I doubt that. If you knew anything about Thatch, old devil. Nah. He wouldn't let that happen. If it's still out there, it's tucked away somewhere nice and safe. But, not that anyone know where to look. Old Kook was a bit paranoid. Didn't really let much in on his secrets. So that's where the pieces of eight comes in? <laughs> yeah, that's where those come in. I don't know much about the details of the whole thing. I was only a little yuppie myself. <clears throat> right when they were making a big holler about all that. Back when Thatch got. got. But, uh... 
yeah. I suppose it makes sense if he would have hidden it away before his final ill-fated voyage. He would have created some way to, well, for enterprising folks such as yourself to find it. But like I said, he was paranoid and had an air for the dramatic. So, uh, well, thus where the old legend comes about. Hmm. Well, it seems like maybe people are going about this the wrong way then. If anything, the pieces of eight are sort of inconsequential. Really, you just need to know something more about Batch. Hmm. Where he hung out, places he felt comfortable, get an idea of where he'd actually hide the thing. You're pretty sharp, aren't you? tell you something here these yuppies don't know I'm too old to go chasing after treasure myself but and I can't say other people haven't already looked into this because boy howdy they probably have but well my pappy back when I was a kid he told me that uh, Thatch very rarely made port here in uh, Reclamation, well, not in D1, anyway, back when he was lording over the place. Didn't want his ship anywhere near prying eyes. No, he kept the vengeance off port. Had his own little base set up. <clears throat> well, not too far from these parts. Just on the other side of Reclamation. Had a, uh, I guess you might call it a haunt. Some sort of hold that he and his crew, only his first mate, a couple other trusted people even knew about. Well, he's gone. Some other folks have taken up a bit of ownership for that property themselves, though I doubt they know what's really in there, if anything's in there. A couple years back, 15, 20 years, the uh, <clears throat> Magnetera, well, they took a special interest in this little piece of space rubble. Decided they'd call it a holy site. Set up a, uh, I don't know, some sort of altar outpost over there for pilgrimages. That big old chunk that, I, that someone brought down with a... Don't laugh. I heard that it was brought down by a gigantic magnet. Yeah, uh, that part's true. And it's as crazy really? as you think it is. No, after all that... Um, well, here, she brings up like a... Her data prep brings up a little holographic map of reclamation. Um, I'll bring up the map here because I'm going to use it whenever I can. Uh, no, their main outpost is still right where it's always been. But no, what they pulled in right over here. Uh, wait, can I? I can't paint on this map. Damn it. Damn it. I'll draw right over here. That took a special liking to the place, and I suppose when he passed, other people wanted to figure out what the fuss was about. The church was the first one to uh, make good on that, though, and they took up home right there. Huh. So you think the magnet folks might know a little more than they're letting on? 
I feel like if they knew what was there and something special was there, that we would have heard about it. No, I think that they're sitting right under their nose and they don't know how to get to it. Hmm. That's my suspicion anyway. Only a few people, I guess, would know. Not many crazy enough to go up against the uh, Magna Terra and the ones crazy enough to join them. Well, they don't say much about their goings on. You uh, know any Magna Terra types around here? There are a few nearby, always proselytizing and trying to recruit. You'll find them. Sure as the day is long. proselytizing about like i get it like we all know that magnets work i don't know fucking it, magnets nobody really knows how they work and well, they just want to capitalize on it <laughs> right right of course okay hmm. well i've done enough gabbing here buy me a drink or uh, leave me in my place. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, you get her a drink. She sips. Uh, you have any other questions for her? Um, not that I can think of at the moment. I think it's a good place to start. Yeah. So, yes, we'll just you know, chat her up. Buy her a couple more drinks. Okay. Uh, you do, and uh, as you are leaving the bar with your your purchases in a bag in hand, uh, those of you, Clarity, Chance, uh, finished up your purchase as well, and all of you find yourselves in the uh, the the market square at the same time, um, and all at the same time. All the lights in the market square kind of dim slightly as a brighter light erupts in the center. A, a massive holographic projection displayed in both the AR and in the meat space. And the a, a figure appears uh, in sort of like a, a shimmering golden field. Uh, you see bits of projected holographic rock sort of spinning out of control uh, and then going into an orbit around them. Uh, you see a man with very well manicured coiffed black hair to the side um, has a, uh, a mustache that's sort of twirl, uh, like twirled up at the edges uh, like a handlebar mustache and is wearing uh, just ornate uh, silvery robes uh, and uh, he says my children once again I ask of you to pledge yourself to the glory of the earth and the rock that we stand upon join the Magna Terra and in that short proclamation, uh, his it begins to repeat, and you see in like a cursive display, uh, in a, like kind of projected over him, and then wrapping around so everyone can see. Uh, it says, "Heed the words of our prophet Apollo, rising, and join the Magna Terra." Yes, his name is Apollo Rising, and that's where we're ending our session here for tonight. <laughs> yes, Morgan? I have a lot of questions. <laughs> like, what, the leader, what, what questions do you have, my child? <laughs> oh, oh, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
just that's we're gonna end our questions okay well that's we're gonna end our session for the night as you've been uh introduced to the the leader of this cult i mean religion and uh we'll, we'll get to know him a bit better in the, in the next few sessions uh well done everyone good session uh everybody we get a minor milestone for that so you can tweak your sheets accordingly uh mm -hmm. details on that i will go ahead and put up for everyone to see uh while i do our sign off thank you everyone for watching uh sorry we got started a bit late today uh we will hopefully uh not have as many computer issues and technical <laughs> issues going forward uh and hopefully we'll have savannah back for our streams this weekend um and as she recovers uh we will be live tomorrow again at five o'clock eastern time for saturday night star power playing fade again uh you'll see some familiar faces there and uh we're, it's our jojo's bizarre adventure slash uh jujutsu kaisen anime bullshit uh game so uh if you like any of that stuff definitely come hang out it's a lot of fun uh anyone have anyone anything they want to uh plug uh promote before we get going okay thank you to my lovely players for as always being a joy to uh gm4 uh thank you everyone out there for watching we will see you all in one week and until next time good game and good night internet <laughs>